What is the best Isla entry level peated whiskey? Time for another showdown. Hey guys, welcome back to Whiskey on the West Coast. My name is Matt. And today, we've got another blind whiskey showdown here. We've got four expressions, all from Isla, all peated, all entry level core range expressions that I wanted to go ahead and compare to actually pick a winner between. And this is inspired by a previous review where I reviewed Ardbeg 10 year old. And I, I kind of feel like it might be the best entry level core range peated whiskey on Isla. Um, but I want to put that to the test. And so if you watch the uh, beginning of this video, you would have seen my uh, trusty partner in crime there, Kyla, uh, going ahead and pouring these whiskeys out. So I don't know what's in each of these glasses. She's got the bottles marked, the glasses marked. And uh, just so you know, she's kind of the behind, you know, all the art, all the design, the editing. She's kind of the engine behind this whiskey channel and she makes things work. So shout out to her. Um, that said, let's get into introducing these bottles here. So on my right, I've got a Lagavulin eight-year-old. It's kind of the, it is the entry level expression in the Lagavulin lineup now. It's bottled at 48% alcohol and it is a uh, ex-bourbon and refill ex-bourbon uh, cast. It might actually be entirely ex-refill. Uh, uh, it's non-chill filtered, natural color. Right beside it here, I got from Brook Lottie, uh, Port Charlotte 10-year-old. It's bottled at 50% alcohol. It is a uh, non-chill filtered, natural colored whiskey and it has a cast makeup of 75% ex-bourbon and 25% second fill ex-wine casks, ex-French wine casks. To my left, this is the Ardbeg 10 year old that I already reviewed. It's natural colored, non-chill filtered, it's 46% alcohol, and it is a mixture of ex-bourbon and ex-refill bourbon casks. And then at the far left, we've got Lafroig Quarter Cask, which is the only one here without an age statement, although it's about six years old. And uh, I chose that over the 10 year old, just because it's a little higher in ABV, puts it closer to the other three bottles on this list. It's bottled at 48% alcohol, and it is a uh, cask makeup of X bourbon casks, which are then moved to quarter casks, 125 liter casks that actually help uh, with surface area and wood contact, uh, increases that by about 30%, which helps apparently smooth out or helps age the whiskey quicker. It is colored and it is chill filtered. All right, so I don't know what's in these glasses. Um, I'm eager uh, f uh, and I am uh, excited about this challenge to see what comes first and to see if I can guess which one's in each glass. Without further ado, Let's get to the showdown. So this is how we're gonna run it here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to nose each one of these whiskeys. I might do some compare and contrast between them too, but I'm gonna take notes on each of these uh, whiskeys nose. And that's gonna be sped up just to save time because it's gonna be a long video if we don't. I wanna save you guys some time. Um, this is really intimidating, but I'm gonna try and do my best with it. I do have some coffee beans uh, with me just to kind of reset my nose to freshen it up in, in case I'm going a little peat blind. Um, so you might see that happen. But otherwise, I'm gonna uh, work on writing notes for the nose on each of these. I'll come back to you, give you what I've written down and what I've found, and then we'll do the same with the palette. I'll taste each palette. I might compare and contrast a little bit, and then I'll come back to you guys and go ahead and report back what I got on the palette, what I'm thinking, and then I'll make my guesses and I'll also make um, my decision on what I think is the best whiskey here. All right, one take wonder, here we go. All right, so I have my first thoughts on these whiskeys. So the gold glass, I've got for my notes here, um, seaweedy, sweet, um, smoky, medicinal, coastal, 
uh, a bit of honey, a little bit of leather, uh, a very distinct peanut note, uh, which to me, they're, they're pointing to a specific whiskey on this table. Um, a bit of pine, a little bit of TCP, but by far it seems to be the shyest nose of these whiskeys, which I'm a little surprised by uh, because I'm thinking this is a Lafroy quarter cask. And maybe it's because this bottle's below half now, and maybe it's losing that punch of Lafroig. In my experience, Lafroig loses a lot of the punch uh, once it's been open for a little while. It's uh, more subject to oxidization than some other bottles. Just off the nose, I'm thinking gold is Lafroig. <clears throat> Number two here, blue, the blue glass. I've got uh, fruity, citrus, mezcal, lime, margarita, some smoky ash, uh, and it's a very bright nose. And to me, those all seem to point to the um, refill bourbon cask uh, forward whiskey on this table, which would be the Lagavulin 8. I usually get that sort of like mezcal note off of it, uh, very much like a lime margarita sort of thing. Ashy uh, smoke off that one, very clean profile, and it is a bit brighter, uh, possibly because of the youth and possibly because using refill casks, it's it's not going to have such an impact. The oak isn't going to be as impactful on the spirit. So I'm guessing uh, blue right now, <clears throat> pardon me, need some water. Blue is Lagavulin 8. Now, the black glass. Oh, other side. Black, I've got lemon, citrus, tar, smoke, leather, uh, a bit of earthiness, cold uh, campfire embers, and a bit of vanilla. Um, so with that, that'll uh, points to Ardbeg 10 for me, uh, especially the cold uh, kind of campfire embers, the tar, and the, the lemon citrus. Um, so for me, black is nosing as if it's Ardbeg 10. And then finally, um, very distinctly different to me was green. Green, I've got uh, Laddy Lactic notes. So already you know what I'm thinking this is. Um, kind of like a yogurt sort of vibe. Smoke. Um, that smoke, though, it, it's not, it, to me, it's not profiling like an Isla smoke. So again, it's pointing towards Brook Laddie uh, because they source their um, peated malt. Uh, for this release anyway from Baird's and they use a Highland peat. Uh, smoke, leather, and then the fruits. It's very fruity and like tropical fruits, like melon, guava, tropical fruit. I get kind of a herbal uh, tea, uh, herbal black tea sort of thing. And then uh, kind of like a smoked uh, honey ham. So some smoked meat, but again, a, a sweet one. So like basted and honey. Um, so off the top, I'm thinking green, Port Charlotte 10 year old. Those are my thoughts off the nose. Um, I'm gonna lock those in for the nose and now it's time for the palette. Wish me luck. Okay, so I've done a first run through on the palettes and all these, and some things I feel are confirmed and th some things I'm kind of um, being thrown by a little. Um, I gotta remind myself that I'm not trying to guess which bottle is which, which naturally, as a human being, you're gonna do. I'm trying to figure out what is the best on the table. <clears throat> And so I'm gonna do one more pass through here, take down whatever notes I have left. I might add a little bit of water uh, in particular to green because it's coming off uh, a little bit more peppery. Um, so I might have, that, that might again be the Port Charlotte with the 50% alcohol. Um, but I'm gonna give it one more run through, try to make it quick on you guys, and then come back with my final thoughts. <clears throat> I 
Okay guys, so I've got my palette, my finish, my tasty notes here. Um, but I think we're running out of space on the camera. Um, my director, Kyla, is telling me that we might need to free up some space on the camera here. Really sorry about this. We're gonna do a brief cut and we'll come back with the uh, tasting notes. This is really difficult. Um, it's super difficult. It's super difficult to pick a winner, a heads and tails winner, because I did pick four really great bottles, four bottles that I intend to keep on my bar. Uh, but for palette, uh, on the gold, it's medicinal, nutty. Uh, I get some TCP and iodine, some smoke, some caramel. Um, really, it was it was a lot of peat to start off with gold. If it was Lafroig, that could have blown my palate immediately. It's very assertive. I get some resin. I get some pine. Um, billowing, medicinal smoke, leather. It's delicious. I really like it. It's 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 a wonderful whiskey, and um, I have some thoughts on what it is, but it, it's high up there in the ratings in this um, in this foursome. Glass number two, blue. Um, pepper, ashy, sweet, some lemon, some lime, so some fruitiness, malt, honey, and the finish in particular was like ashtray, smoke, uh, campfire, uh, some pepper. There was pepper on the palate to start off with. Um, leather, like rich, big, leathery peat notes. The the finish was, was uh, long. It, it, it was uh, formidable. I have, I'm going back and forth on what this might be. I have no idea um, between the two. It's gonna be a toss up for me here. Black, uh, vanilla, citrus, dark tar, embers, smoke, leather, big peat. Um, it's really well balanced, this palette, whatever this is. Um, it's, it's nicely rounded. It's pleasant, it's sweet, it's sweet peat, it's leather, um, great resolve. I really like this whiskey. This whiskey is probably the the most well balanced of the bunch. <clears throat> Pardon me, my voice is going. And green. <laughs> it's very peaty. Um, a lot of pepper. Um, fruits, leather, sweetness. It seems to be the most naked palette um, to me. And, it, and again, it's very peppery. Pepper from front to back and maybe I'm going peat blind uh, maybe I have some palate fatigue by this fourth dram here but it just seemed there was a lot of pepper maybe it's higher in per alcohol percentage um, finish extremely peaty ashy big smoke um, the biggest peat resolve was on green so <clears throat> first off I'm gonna tell you where I rank these whiskeys uh, one through four and then I'm gonna tell you my guesses, and my guesses have changed from when I nosed these whiskeys. So off the top, I'm gonna to say the best whiskey of the bunch for me tonight, and this could change, is black. Uh, black was the, the most balanced. It brought a little bit of everything. I really enjoyed this whiskey. I could drink this all night. Black is my number one. Probably shouldn't have started at number one, but it's a reveal regardless. Number two, going with gold. Gold, I um, I love this profile uh, for this whiskey. Um, it's one of my favorites. I love the really strong uh, coastal vibes. I love the medicinal vibes. Um, it's just a very Moorish whiskey. I want to drink more of it. Again, not a whole lot of pepper, but huge peat, huge peat. Uh, next, I'm giving the edge to blue. Blue is my third place whiskey here. And the reasons for this are going to be notes um it, it, it just it seemed to be more restrained than the green on the pepper i don't love uh overwhelming pepper and i was gonna add water to the green but it didn't seem fair to only add water to one whiskey and i didn't want this video to go too much longer um blue Really nice uh, peat resolve. It was very rich on the peat, uh, extremely rich. Um, the most leathery of, of the bunch, and I love a leathery peat. Um, something that's very earthy, uh, rich. I, I really appreciated the, the fruit on the palate too, um, and the sweetness. And there, 
there's kind of like a sweet smoked meat sort of thing going on there on the palate. Um, so blue is going to be my number three. And there's no shame coming in last place in this lineup. But green is my last place. We'll see just because there was so much pepper. And again, this could have been entirely different if I added water. Um, but it was pepper from front to back on my palate, which has its place. Um, but going back to my notes. Um, it just seemed to be a little bit out of balance in that way. But huge peat smoke at the end. Massive. Um, big, the, definitely the peatiest and smokiest uh, of the finishes. Um, they're all enjoyable in their own ways. As for guesses as to what's what, I'm saying the gold is Laphroaig Quarter Cask. I love that profile. I, I really do. It's a very, um, it's near and dear to my heart. I love Laphroaig 10 Cast Strength. That's kind of my go-to Laphroaig. Um, so it's no wonder that came number two. Number one, I'm gonna guess is Ardbeg 10 year old. I really do think if that is Ardbeg, it, it's just, it's a it's a stellar dram and it deserves a place on everyone's bar. We'll see if I'm right. Blue, I'm gonna actually flip flop here. On the nose, I thought green might be the Brook Laddie. Um, and I remember enjoying the Brook Laddie more than the Lagavulin 8. I found the green almost more naked uh, and um, with less oak impact um, in this comparison. So for that reason, I'm switching what I thought between blue and green for the nose uh, and the palette. So originally I said green was the laddie and blue was the Lagavulin. I'm swapping that out. I'm saying blue is the Port Charlotte just because it seems a bit... Um, well-rounded and I'm getting um, a richer palette and I'm gonna say green is the Lagavulin eight-year-old but those two I'm the least confident in all right so what we're all here for probably what some of you skipped ahead for uh, the reveal which one is which so I'm gonna start off with um, I'm gonna start off with our fourth place bottle which is You'll get to see it before me. Is there one down there? Yellow. So I had guessed... I had guessed that that was Lagavulin. And you'll see before me. I should feel shame. It is the Lagavulin 8-year-old. I feel some relief. It just seemed the most naked of the palettes, which screamed refill bourbon to me. Um, and I kept getting this more mezcal thing to it. So, one for one. Unfortunately, Lagavulin fans, uh, the eight-year-old came in last place. But again, no shame. This is a uh, murderer's row of Isla whiskeys. All right, third place. I had pegged as blue. So blue, I'll show you here. Blue is orange. And I'd guessed orange was the Brook Laddie. All right. Orange it is. All right, two for two. Feeling good. Um, I'm glad I flipped those on my, um, on my palette. The palette really told the story for me. It just seemed more uh, well-rounded and a lot richer. A bit more fruit. Um, I enjoyed the palette more, and I remembered enjoying the palette more on the laddie. All right, so let's go to our second place. Actually, you know what? Let's do the first because I mean, if I show you the second place, you're all going to know what won. So first place, drum roll, please. All right, so we only had three colors of dots, so we're going to see if Ardbeg Ten Year Old has a sticker on the bottom. No sticker, which means black was indeed the Ardbeg 10 year old, uh, which means just for to be fulsome here, gold is green, uh, Lafroy quarter cask, sorry, 
has a green sticker on the bottom. All right, so I, f I don't feel like I'm losing my mind anymore. Uh, I went four for four, which I was lucky to do. It could have gone either way. Um, Ardbeg 10 is the winner. Ardbeg 10 is the um, best entry level Isla peated whiskey on this table right here in front of me. I'm, to be honest, I'm not surprised. I kind of had that feeling when I reviewed Ardbeg 10. I put it out there as possibly being the best entry level Isla peated whiskey. And I think it held its own. I think it did a good job uh, against some stiff competition. So let me know in the comments, number one, if you want me to do more blind showdowns, because these are, um, <laughs> they are intimidating, uh, but I'm happy to do them if you guys enjoy them. Number two, let me know what your favorite among these four bottles are. And there's some more competition out there in Isla. I, Coloman isn't here. Kalila isn't here. Is there an, an Isla entry level peated whiskey that I should have had on this table instead of one of these? And maybe I'll go ahead and do another showdown. Um, but yeah, let me know your favorite on the table. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you can go ahead and like, subscribe uh, and share, I'd really appreciate it and come back for more in the future. From the West Coast, I'm gonna take a sip of our winner here, Ardbeg 10-year-old, and uh, I'll see you next time. Slancha.